Hello everyone. Today in this video tutorial, I am going to take a low-cover new sensor that is ADS double one double. Now to get a better view regarding this sensor, what we have to do is to log in to the website that is controleverything.com and here we have to search on for this sensor and let's see what we got here. It's ADS double one double and here you can see it's a 16 bit one channel analog to digital converter and also you can have some uh, view over some of the features which are clearly visible on this very screen and the plus point is there you can purchase this sensor from this website from here for this video part i will be interfacing the sensor ads double one double o with an arduino nano and the code will be in arduino language so for that go to resource tab and here comes the Arduino code sample which you are able to see on my screen now you can download this as the file from here just like that also you can go to github.com and from there the repository there is controlled everything comment you can download the code from there also well now we require some hardware so that we can put it together and make a useful video so let's have a look over that also Now in the hardware connection setup part, uh, the first thing we require is an Arduino Nano which you are able to see on my screen. Next we require an I2C sheet just like this. Now it's available on the website controleverything.com and the real reason we are using this sheet is to make connections with other I2C devices a lot easier. So for that gently place this Arduino Nano over the I2C sheet and make a connection like that. For the power up function, what do we require is a mini USB cable just like this and gently insert it over here, the power jack. The next thing we require is our sensor that is ADS1100. Now this here is a connecting cable. Now this connecting cable is very useful in making connection with the sensor and the I2C sheet and making this connection make sure that the ground terminal of the sensor should be connected to the ground wire of the cable and similarly to the I2C sheet just like that. As we are done with all the connection setup, what do we require next is to have a look over the code. Now coming to the interfacing part regarding the Arduino code, the first step is to log in to github.com and after that uh, we have to search for the repository that is control everything community and after that uh, let's have a look over the sensor that is ADS1100 and here it is it's analog to digital converter and here comes the Arduino code but moving before moving forward to the code let's have a look over the instructions we need to fulfill and it says that we have to download and install Arduino software ID on our local machine and the steps to install this Arduino on the local machine is given here on arduino.cc and let's open up this link and let's see what we got here in this link. Uh, as you can see, you can download the Arduino software and also it runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. It's your choice to run it on your operating system. And after that, uh, let's get back to uh, the code. It's the Arduino code, which is a .ino extension file. Now, and these are some of the points which you can see. And after that, in the code, you can see we have included y.h library and we have defined the address of the sensor that is 0x48 now in the void setup function we have initialized i2c communication as master along with serial communication with the baud rate equal to 9600 and then we have start of the i2c transmission and in this part we are going to write some data onto the sensor giving some commands which is for the continuous conversion mode e sps and one pga and it will provide us 0x 0c and then we have to stop the ITC transmission now in the void loop function we are going to read some data back from the sensor as you can see we have requested two bytes of data from the address and we are reading two bytes of data which are uh, raw ADC MSB and LSB and after that we have a conversion of the data which includes some of the formulas and thesis which you can see and uh, have your look over on the data sheet for ADS double one double O. At the very end of our code, we have the output data to be displayed on the to the serial monitor, which you can see as the digital value of the analog output, which is exactly the raw output. So let's have a look over that also. Now coming to a very interesting part that is to check the practicality of this code. The next step is to copy this entire code of the Arduino, and after that. 
we have to open up the Arduino terminal and the next is to paste the entire code and then save it by the name ADS1100. It's a reference name and then we have to verify and compile the code and it's done. After that we have to upload the code and check whether it's uploaded or not and it's done uploading. Now we have to check for the output onto the serial monitor. So let's open up the serial monitor. As you can see we have the digital value of analog input. As you see it's almost near to zero and almost constant because there is nothing connected onto the terminals. But instead when I try to connect the terminals with a AA battery of 1.5 volt you can see we have a change of digital value of analog input and it's a raw value and it's almost constant. It means the sensor is working and we have connected a cell a battery of 1.5 volt. So this is how the sensor responds. Now the next step is to look over the applications, benefits and the features of the sensor ADS1100. The ADS1100 is a precision continuously self calibrating analog to digital converter with differential inputs and up to 16 bit of resolution. The ADS1100 uses an I2C compatible serial interface and operates from a single power supply ranging from 2.7 volt to 5.5 volt. ADS1100 is designed for applications like portable instrumentation, industrial process control, smart transmitters, factory automation and a lot more to mention. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab from this site. You can download the code as a zip file. Also you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sensor or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching.